when I was 13 years old, I started doing uh, martial arts training. Totally back ass words. Meaning I had no intention of doing it. Me and my punk friend just happened to walk by a martial arts school in Philadelphia one day. And we were just gawking in the window. We were just looking at the people training. And the guy, thankfully, actually walked out. He walked out from behind the counter and came out the door. It was a spring day. We just came back from a, like a little league baseball game. And he said, hey, you know, what are you doing? You guys want to take, it was called karate. Uh, you guys want to take karate? And we were like, ah, yeah, but maybe, maybe not. So he kind of drug us in there. You know, he drug us in there, and he was talking to about four or five of us. And he dragged us in. <laughs> Did I just say I'm from South Philly or what? <laughs> so that'll be the last grammar correction we'll have for today. <laughs> if you really want me, I can dig deep and really get an accent going. So, um, anyway, so he, he dragged us in there, and... He started talking about what would be involved in training, and he said, come back a week from now. And he probably knew that he might, probably wouldn't come back, right, because who does that? You know, kids, kids who come in without their parents usually don't end up signing up. But anyway, I was serious. I came back a week later, and I told my dad, hey, I'm going to try this karate thing. And he was like, yeah, all right. He sent my older brother to take me to the lesson. So my older brother took me to the lesson, and then... The guy said, well, this is, you know, it's going to be this much. You can either pay it for the year or you can pay it every month. And my older brother, who's actually 16 years older than me, he was like uh, late 20s at that point, he, uh, he said, all right, I'll tell my father and, you know, we'll, when can we come back? And the guy said, well, I'll come back Monday at this time. So I went home and I said, Dad, you know, I want to do this. Uh, I want to take lessons. He's like, yeah, sure. Or another thing, you'll quit probably. Um, and I was the youngest of four, so my... My dad's parenting skills were good, by, but by that time, it was a lot of whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so we went back that Monday, and my dad you know, paid for lessons, and I signed up. And I signed up with another friend who quit about a couple months later, but I stayed with it and uh, really got hooked on it. Um, helped out around the school, got my black belt fairly quickly, uh, started taking, a, who's ever heard of MMA, mixed martial arts? Have you ever heard of that? It's pretty popular right now. Uh, but after I got my black belt in Taekwondo in 1995, I started taking Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is an element of mixed martial arts, which is the, where you see them go on the ground and get in the, what's the mounted position and arm bars and stuff like that. I started doing that. Um, so I really got into the martial arts. But then I got out of high school, and I quickly enrolled in Community College of Philadelphia. Community College because my grades weren't that great. Um, <laughs> So community, well, community college was pretty much it for me. So I enrolled in community college, and I was always into health and nutrition, and I started taking these health and nutrition classes, which I realized really weren't, I like to eat healthy, but I don't think I can do that for a living, I realized. So quickly, I dropped out within a week. I said, I'm out of here, because this college thing is just not going to work. So I had a part-time job at the time. I was working as a, uh, as a grocery clerk, actually a cashier in a, in a local supermarket, part-time. And there was this guy who worked there. His name was Bruno. Now, I said I'm from South Philly, so if you think of a guy named Bruno from South Philly, what would come to mind? <laughs> you know, if he had a shirt like this, it would be a little more unbuttoned. There would be a gold chain hanging out, you know, that kind of guy. But this guy did not fit the stereotypical South Philly Bruno. As a side note, I did know a lot of interesting people growing up. I mean, like the neighborhoods that I you know, used to run around in, I mean, they could have, if they needed extras for a mafia movie, <laughs> Joey, Bobby, Bobby, Vinny, let's go. We need you. We need to make it a mouthy movie. I mean, I told uh, Julie and Marissa one year close to Christmas, said, girls, when Daddy was growing up, Santa Claus didn't say ho, ho, ho. I said, what did he say, Daddy? He said, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> so this Bruno did not fit the stereotype. He did not look like a South Philly tough guy. He actually looked more like George from Seinfeld. Any Seinfeld fans in here? That was Bruno. Not so much a tough guy, but he was, he was a smart guy. Uh, even though he had worked in that store for a long time, it was kind of a lifer. And he said, hey, how's college going? I said, well, not too good. I withdrew. He said, you didn't withdrew. You dropped out. I said, yeah, that's the case. So what are you going to do now? I said, I don't know. He said, well, Mike, you're into that Taekwondo, karate, martial arts stuff. I said, yeah. He said, well, you have a marketable skill. I said, Bruno wouldn't like me. I went to an all-boys Catholic high school. What's a marketable skill? <laughs> he said, a marketable skill means you paid to learn martial arts, so why would, if you're any good at it, why wouldn't other people do that? Why couldn't you have your own studio? 
and I always loved it. I always was close with the instructors and, and everything. And I said, you know, that, that could work. But see, I didn't think about it too long. And I think that's a takeaway of the story. I didn't sit there and ponder it forever. Maybe that could work. Actually, I took action. But the next day, I, just, I went back to the studio I trained at and uh, was talking to my first instructor. I just asked him, kind of probing, hey, how are things going around here? And, um, you know, and it was back and forth, what are you up to? I told him the, the school situation. He said, well, I got an idea for you. And in my mind, I was saying, that's why I'm here. What's up? <laughs> so he said, um, I had this idea of, you know, having the, the one school that's a couple thousand square feet, you know, probably about a little bit bigger than this room here. We have about 4,000 square feet. So the studio at the time was about 2,500 square feet. Have a smaller studio in one of these neighborhoods in South Philly. The neighborhoods are densely populated. And there's all these corner, corner stores, right? He said, so we have these little studios all around town that are like satellite locations. And this was late, this was 1990, late 1997, because I graduated high school in 97. I said, sounds like a good idea to me. What do you need me to do? He said, well, you know what? I'll put up... Uh, I'll put up all the money, which is not a lot. It's like a couple thousand bucks to actually get open. But you, what you need to do is you need to find a location. So the next week, like two weeks, I spent driving around up and down neighborhoods looking for a location. And then I found one. Um, now, I had this for about a, a year and a half, but it wasn't a great business model because I was an owner here, yes, but the problem was I would sign up my students and then I would send them off to the other sc school. So I don't know if you know anything about the membership type business, but people quit all the time, but you don't want to purposely make them quit. <laughs> all right, so it was fun, it was a good experience, but it had no long-term staying power, because after a few months, I was literally kicking people out. Did I get that pun? No, you didn't, okay. Um, so, then he was going through some tough times, and about a year and a half later, he said, well, you know, I probably would need you over here. We moved across the street, uh, in the location where we were, and uh, it was about 12000 bucks to build out that school, and I gave him half the money for half of the uh, S-Corporation. That's a, the way you structure your business entity, by the way, as a small business owner, either an S-Corp or an LLC. Um, I gave him half of the money for the, half of the S-Corp stock to build it out. And then from there, you know, everything was, was different. You know, we, um, what I didn't know was that business was doing about... 9,000 bucks a month and the expenses were about seven. So there wasn't a lot of wiggle room there. However, one of the lessons is when you have a small business and you really clearly define your roles, even if it's just you and you clearly define what the roles are. You know, as an owner, a lot of times you're the marketer in chief. <coughs> Sometimes you're also the bottle washer in chief, meaning you're the marketer and you're doing it. And that's okay. But think about, you know, what roles are going to be developed down the road as I grow if I want to grow. And if you don't want to grow, just make sure you clearly define what your roles are so you can manage your time more effectively. So anyway, one of the reasons why the first month we were together and having those fixed expenses of around seven, we did about 14, 15,000. By November, we had our first month of 25,000. All right, and then we had a studio that was in the top 20% of the industry for many years, wrote articles for trade journals, spoke at martial arts industry conventions, still do. All right, so that was sort of the history. But one of the lessons was that you know we clearly defined our roles, and that's how we grew. Does that make sense? Anyway, that's just a little extra for you. So that's pretty much how, what was the start. And I had that business for about eight years.